Hello and welcome to another episode of Walk the Word, where we uh, dive into God's Word uh, each day and uh, look to pull out a few points of how we can uh, live our Christian lives and uh, yeah, how it applies to our lives. So um, we are in a series in the book of Acts at the moment and we are up to Acts chapter 18 this morning. We reached up to chapter 18 and as always you will find the description in the not the this yeah the passage in the description below and uh, yeah I encourage you to grab your Bibles and to read along and see what God says to you through this passage um, and we've got a fairly long ish passage today and there's quite a lot in there so we'll only be able to pull a, a few points out of it but I uh, yeah encourage you to read the passage and uh, to pull out some points yourself after after or in your own time but yeah I'll I'll start reading from chapter 18 verses one. After this, Paul left. At, after this, Paul left at Athens and went to Corinth. Then he met a Jew named Aquilus, a native of Pont Pontus, who had recently come from Italy with his wife Priscilla, because Cor Claudius had ordered all the Jews to leave Rome. Paul went to see them, and because he was a tent maker as they were, he stayed and worked with them. Every Sabbath he reasoned in the synagogue, trying to persuade Jews and Greeks. When Silas and Timothy came from Macedonia, Paul devoted himself exclusively to preaching, testifying to the Jews that Jesus was the Messiah. But when they opposed Paul and became abusive, he shook out his clothes in protest and said to them, Your blood be on your own heads. I am innocent of it. For now I, from now on I will go on to the Gentiles. Then Paul left the synagogue and went next door to the house of Titius Justus, a worshipper of God. Crispus, the synagogue leader, and his entire household believed in the Lord, and many of the Corinthians who heard Paul believed and were baptised. One night the Lord spoke to Paul in a vision. Do not be afraid. Keep on speaking. Do not be silent, for I am with you, and no one is going to attack you and harm you because I have many people in this city. So Paul stayed in Corinth for a year and a half, teaching them the word of God. When G Gallius was proconsul of Archiasa, the Jews of Corinth made a united attack on Paul and brought him to the place of judgment. This man they charged is persuading the people to worship God in ways contrary to the law. Just as Paul was about to speak, Gallius said to them, if the Jews were making a complaint about some misdemeanour or serious crime, it'd be, it'd be reasonable for me to listen to you. But since it involves questions about words and names and your own law, settle the matter yourselves. I will not judge, as, I will not judge of such things. So he drove them off. Then the crowds turned on Sodinus, so the synagogue leader, and beat him in front of the pro-council. And Galileus showed no concern whatsoever. So we have a, a lot in this story. Uh, yeah, there's a lot going on. But first we, we see Paul has travelled on to Corinth from Athens. He's off um, on his adventures again. And we know uh, he eventually establishes a church here, or a church is established here because of the work that Paul has put in here and uh, we see later on letters written to the Corinthian church we get one Corinthians and two Corinthians and uh, what I first want to point out about this passage is actually we see uh, several partnerships within this passage there uh, Paul's not doing it all by himself um, he he partners with different people along, along the way so the first one we come across is um, Aquila and Priscilla who we um, we later on go to read about in other books and um, who actually later on in the chapter of uh, this they go on and uh, travel with Paul to Ephesus and um, Paul partners with them he partners with them uh, in the gospel but he also partners with them in work he um, he works with them he works alongside them they both are tent makers and here Paul is um, he's making money effectively to to live on he he needs money as he goes around preaching the gospel and um, he hasn't had gifts from other churches yet where he can just focus on the preaching. So he, he is working 
in the week and then on the weekend on the sabbath he is then going to the synagogue and uh, preaching and trying to persuade them we also see Tylus and timothy come and join him and uh, when they arrive uh, paul then is able to give his uh, entire time to preaching it's probably likely they came with a gift of money which then helped um, paul um, live off so he could then devote himself to to preaching and we also see um, he partners, he goes into people's houses, he goes into Titius's Justice's house. Uh, he also, uh, the Chris, Crispus, the synagogue leader, he looks like he partners with him at some point because he, um, he shares the gospel with them and they all believe. So there's lots of different partnerships here and actually we're, uh, we're not called to do it by ourselves, we are we're called to to partner with other people actually it's why god calls us into it into a church we are living stones being built into uh something uh into a church so um into a people of god so um we don't need to go out and evangelize by ourselves we are called to partner with people and uh yeah to share the gospel with others around us and what else we see in this passage is we have the rough and the smooth actually we see uh, times where Paul shares the gospel and many people are believed and baptised and but we also see um, there is a lot of rough times actually Paul is um, looks like he's probably afraid for his life um, at times um, people protest against him they bring him to court they try and accuse him of stuff and what they're accusing him of is um, he's telling them that Jesus is the Messiah Jesus is the Son of God and uh, that's exactly what the, the Jews killed Jesus for, for blaspheming, basically, for trying to, for Jesus was saying, I'm God. But Paul's confirming it and saying, actually, Jesus is God. He is the Messiah. And the Jews don't like it. So they are trying to, to kill him or get him put into prison. So we see the rough and the smooth here. But what we see here is um, actually when, uh, so one, when Paul has opposition actually he shared the gospel and they're not listening to him and he says i've done my part i'm shaking the, my clothes and shaking the dust of this place off um if you're not prepared to listen i um i can't be held accountable for your salvation i can't be held um yeah it's not on my hands now to to try and persuade you and actually uh it's really important we recognize those times actually where we see people aren't responding to us and actually we don't want to be people are shoving the bible down their throats or um trying to persuade something they're never going to believe in but actually we need to be looking for the people of peace actually we do that a lot in our in our commission groups we we pray for the people that actually we believe are people of peace peace who are, are open to hearing the gospel so um, yeah, I just encourage you to carry on praying for your people of peace and looking out for them and being able to share the gospel with them. And then we also see Paul um, has a dream from God here that actually that he's not going to get harmed and um, that actually God has lots of people in this city. And so uh, Paul uh, would be encouraged by this. He um, knows that it's worth his toil to the hard work of his preaching and teaching because God has called many people in, in that city. And because of that, then Paul um, ends up staying for, for 18 months, for a year and a half. He doesn't, um, it wasn't just a, a quick couple of weeks visit. It wasn't just like a quick mission trip. Actually, Paul stays a long time teaching and preaching the word. And we see a, a church is established. And so, yeah, I just, uh, there are a couple of things we've pulled out today is partnership. Who are you partnershiping with the gospel? I'd say get involved in the church, get involved in partnership with people in, and in sharing the gospel together. Uh, look who you can partner with to share the gospel with. And also we see the rough and the smooth and actually just encouragement to look out for those people of peace. Actually, if you find them, you're hitting a brick wall, sharing the gospel, they're not receptive, they're they're coming back against you, um, not in just a, asking lots of questions, but just a really like negative, this isn't true, kind of, um, kind of, it's not wrong to kind of shake them off and say, I've done my part, I've 
I've told you about this gospel. Um, but yeah, we should be looking for the people of peace, people who are receptive to hearing the gospel, who have those questions of general, who are generally interested and intrigued. And so uh, I just encourage you to be in praying for them, to, to seeking after them and to be uh, looking to share in the gospel with them. So we are going to draw it to a close there. I pray that you have a really good week and we look forward to seeing you again soon.